Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we'll be implementing examples for Elasticsearch security. In one of the previous tutorials, we saw the working of 5-bit and Logstash. In this tutorial, we'll be securing the 5-bit Logstash connection using SSL mutual authentication. This I'll be taking reference of my website javanews.com. Go to Spring Boot Elasticsearch. Example that we'll be implementing today is 5-bit Logstash SSL mutual authentication example. I'll be sharing this URL along with the YouTube video. In previous tutorial, we had implemented Spring Boot ELK stack. Also in another tutorial, we had implemented 5-bit ELK stack. So in this tutorial, we had seen why 5-bits are required and how to configure them. So we had seen that Logstash is also capable of reading the log files and then sending it to Elasticsearch. However, Logstash is a heavy resource and it consumes a lot of memory. So it is not an optimal solution to install Logstash on all the servers to read the logs and then send them to Elasticsearch. Instead, what we do is we install 5 bits which are lightweight agents for reading the logs on each of these servers. So this 5 bits they consume less memory and they read the logs and then send the logs to Logstash. We will be having a single instance of Logstash which will read all the logs that are sent to it by the different 5 bit agents, process these logs and then index them to Elasticsearch. In this tutorial, we will be securing the connection between 5-bit and Logstash. So previously, we had secured Elasticsearch instance with username and password and also configured SSN, TLS and HTTPS for it. However, it is not possible to secure Logstash and 5-bit using credentials. Elasticsearch does not provide us with that option. In this tutorial, we will be securing the connection between Logstash and 5-bit by implementing SSL authentication using certificates. For this tutorial, we will be making use of the latest Elastic version which is Elasticsearch 8. Let us begin with the implementation part. For the Logstash and Filebit mutual authentication, we will be needing the following certificates. The first is the CA.CRT certificate. So this is the certificate that is issued by the Trusted Certificate Authority. And using this CA.CRT, we generate another certificate, ELK.CRT. So this certificate is then given to Logstash and Filebit. Both Filebit and Logstash use the CA certificate to verify the authenticity of each other certificates during TLS handshake. So we will see how this happens. The CA certificate it serves as a trusted root and all certificates signed by this CA are considered valid and trusted. The next is the ENK.CRT. So as from previously that this certificate it is generated using CA.CRT. This file it contains the public certificate. During TLS handshake, Logstash and Finebeat present this certificate to authenticate their identity to each other. The CA certificate is used to verify the validity and authenticity of the ENK.CRT server certificate. And finally, we have the ENK.Key which is the private key. This file it contains a private key corresponding to the ELK.CRT server certificate. The private key is used to prove its ownership of the ENK.CRT certificate during TLS handshake. Private key is used to encrypt a part of TLS handshake which can then be decrypted using the public key from the ELK certificate. So we'll see how this happens. Let us have a look at how mutual TLS between Filebit and Logstash it works. So Filebit it first pings hello to Logstash. Logstash then replies with a hello. And also Logstash then sends its public certificate that is ENK.CRT to Filebit. Filebit then verifies the sent ENK.CRT using the CA.CRT certificate. So once it is validated, it means that Logstash it has authenticated itself to Filebit. And Filebit it can trust Logstash. Next Filebit it sends its own ENK.CRT file to Logstash. So Logstash then validates this ENK.Certificate using CA.CRT. And once validated then Filebit it has authenticated itself to Logstash and Logstash can trust Filebit. So once this trust has been established, Filebit and Logstash they communicate with each other with encrypted data using ENK.Key. So let us begin with the implementation part. We'll first be downloading and configuring Logstash. So go to the Logstash download page. Here for Windows, download Logstash. Here I've unzipped the downloaded Logstash. Go to the Logstash folder and here we'll be creating a new configuration file. Its name will be giving it as Logstash.conf. The created config file will be adding this configuration. So here we are specifying that Logstash it will be listing on port 5044 for any file bit inputs. So this will be the input. And once it gets the input from file bits, we are just going to print it out in the console. So copy this. So we are done with adding the configuration. Next we'll be starting Logstash. So for this go to the bin folder of the Logstash. And here, we'll be making use of logstash.bat file to start logstash. So this will be passing the logstash.configuration that we just created. So here logstash it has started and it is listening on port 5044 for any input from file bits. This will be configuring file bit. Go to this file bit download page and here we'll be downloading file bit for zip version. So download this for Windows. Here I've unzipped the downloaded file bits. Go to this folder here. 
and we'll be modifying the filebit.yaml file to add the configuration. So copy the configuration from here. So here for filebit, we'll be reading from the logs folder of the A drive, all the log files, and this data will be outputting it to log stash, which is listening on port localhost 5044. So copy this configuration. Delete all this, paste it here. In the E drive logs folder, we have a single log file named a.log. This file, it will be read by filebit and sent to log stash for processing. So let us now start filebit. In one of the command prompts, we have already started log stash. Open another command prompt and go to the uh, filebit folder. So here we'll be making use of filebit.exe. To this, we'll be passing the filebit.yaml configuration file. So once started here, we can see that filebit, it is successfully sending this data to logstash. Here we can see the hello message that we have in this file is being sent by filebit to logstash, which is then processing and just uh, printing it to the console. Let us now implement mutual authentication using SSL for logstash and filebit. So I'll be stopping logstash and filebit. For the security certificates that we need to implement mutual authentication for filebit and logstash, we'll need to make use of the Elasticsearch installation. So using the Elasticsearch cert util, we'll be generating the required certificates. So previously we had seen the certificates that are required, ca.crt, elk.crt and elk.key. So these are generated using Elasticsearch. So go to the Elasticsearch downloads page and download Elasticsearch. So once Elasticsearch is downloaded, unzip it and go to the bin folder. In the bin folder, we have the Elasticsearch cert util. We'll be making use of this to generate CA certificate. So this is the command for it. Copy this. So here I'm inside the bin folder of Elasticsearch. Here we have Elasticsearch cert util. So this CA certificate, it will be generated in ELK search folder. Here we are inside the search folder and here the CA.zip has been generated. Unzip it. We go here. So here we have the CA.CRD and CA.key. Next, using the CA certificate, we'll be generating the node certificates that are required by FileBeat and Logstash. So for this, we'll need to specify a list of instances or nodes on which this FileBeat or Logstash they are running. So for my example, I'll be running Logstash and FileBeat locally only. So in my instance.yaml file, I'll just be specifying this name as ELK and DNS as localhost as I'm running it locally. If we had a scenario where filebeats and logstash they were running on multiple hosts, then I would have specified multiple instances with different names and different DNS. Let us create this instance.yaml file. Go to the search folder, create a new file. Next, we create the node certificates. Again, for this, we make use of Elasticsearch cert utils. So for this, we pass the CA cert that just got created. Also, the ca.key file that got generated. We also pass the instances.yaml file that we created and the location where we want these certificates. And finally, we specify that the validity of the generated ENK certificates, it should be 365 days. So using the Elasticsearch cert util, let us generate the node certificates. Copy this. Go to the Elasticsearch bin folder. So now go to the cert folder. So here ENK cert.zip has been created. Unzip this. So enk.crt and enk.key has been created for us. Finally, using the OpenSSL command line tool, we'll be converting the enk.key, which is a private key file that we just auto-generated to the pkcs8 format. So for this, we'll be making use of OpenSSL pkcs8 command. We specify the location where we have this elk.key and we'll be generating a new key in pkcs format with the name enk.pkcs8.key. In OpenSSL command line tool, make use of this command. So you can now go to the search folder. Here the elk.pkcs8.key has been generated for us. So we are done with all the certification stuff. Let us now make use of these certificates to secure the connection between Logstash and FileBeat using SSL mutual authentication. So for this first, we'll be modifying the FileBeat's configuration. The changes that we'll be making is in the output Logstash, we'll be specifying the certificates that we just created. So the SSL certificate authorities will be the ca.crt certificate. SSL certificate will be the enk.crt certificate and ssl.key will be the elk.pkcs8.key certificate that we just created. So copy these three lines. Go to ib.yaml and add this here. Make similar changes to the logstash configuration file. So in logstash in input we will be specifying SSL is true. So now it will be listening on HTTPS for this 5044 port. Next, we specify the certificate similar to what we did for file beats. So we specify the ca.crt file, elk.crt file, and the elk.pkcsa.key file. So copy this whole lines.
So we are done with all the changes for Logstash and 5B. Let us now test this. So I'll first be starting Logstash. So I'll again use the same command as before. Here Logstash it has successfully started on port 5044. Let us now start 5bit. 5bit it has also started. The previous a.log file, let us add some more statements. So here we can see that Logstash it has successfully received these messages from 5bit. So here we have successfully implemented SSL mutual authentication for Logstash and 5bit connection. If you find this tutorial useful, thank you.